Friday, July 26th. Oh, hey Cheryl, so fast every time. Um, hi everybody, so we have, again, we have Facebook and we have Instagram going. I have my husband Wes here. Um, it's always fun when he comes on with me. And he's a grief recovery specialist as well. So kind of cool. He has good perspective, good insight, and I, um, I'm thankful when he comes on here because not only is it fun, but it's cool to see other people's insights and other people's feedback. And um, so, yeah, so Wes had something on his heart that he wanted to talk about today. So, yeah, what, what sure. came up for you? What did you notice? Well, I've been reading this book, and um, I kind of come across some awareness. I'm not a big reader, but when I do sit down to read, which is a, a miracle in and of itself, um, I really dig in, and I know that maybe about that myself that, you know, I'm hesitant to read because I do dig in, and it takes a lot of time. I'm, I'm a slow reader. We got the, the rabbit in the race and the turtle in the race. If we had a race, I'm reading a book. She'd, she'd finish in the first day. I'd probably be like three months into it on the second chapter. So, hey, anyway, but kind of a, uh, a topic that Rochelle asked if I had anything to share, and absolutely I did have something to share. Um, as I'm reading this book, coming across, um, one of the main things is to come across your purpose. And I'm just going to read my purpose real quick that I came across. And um, so my purpose here is the purpose of my life is to love myself and my higher power and uh, feel the value that results while inspiring others to feel the same. So love as being the first primary emotion and value the second. And I'm just going to share that going into this awareness that I have with some specific examples of my life. Like um, something you've discovered through your work. Yes, yes. I've, I've kind of discovered how much, um, in the, when we talk about love, how much a, approval addiction I have. Um, which stems back from childhood, but just in some recent, recent situations, how I've been able to actually plaster this in and go, oh, I can see why I did that. And so many times, you know, when people say, hey, you know, we have this event, can you come? My first day is absolutely, I'd love to come. And sometimes I put my foot in the mouth, oh yeah, that'd be great, I'd love to. I think about it, it's awesome, we're gonna be there. And then after I open my mouth, thinking I wanna encourage this person, the logistics come into play and then the discussion with you know my significant other comes into play and then sometimes that turns into like a little bit of a intense uh, discussion because of not thinking before I speak you know and any of you guys can relate to putting your foot in your mouth I'm a big one at that so because I'm so big on people pleasing and approval addiction so for for put to give you a specific example you know we had a recent event where uh, somebody I really care about um, said yeah, a big, big event, special time in this, these folks' life that I, I really wanted to go. Um, and so Rochelle and I had a discussion about it. Hey, what's this coming up on the calendar? What are we going to do? Me being like, oh, we're going to go. Awesome. It's going to be great. You you literally said, yeah, let's go. I think that they'd really like that. Yeah, I said these people are what's really special. It's going, to very, it's going to encourage them. We have to be there. Not thinking of what does that look like? For me, what does that look like for Rochelle? Look like for our kids. So the situation we had here was we, um, for one, we had at this particular weekend, we had no help with our kids, and it was a, an adult-only event. The um, destination. Yeah, it was going to be a great getaway. It would have been awesome. But, you know, there's some logistics involved. And so, you know, thinking of myself, it really wasn't a good self-choice because finances, you know, the finances were kind of tight during this time. Um, so there's number one, number two reality. We didn't, we didn't, it was a weekend where we didn't really have help for, with our kids. We love taking our kids everywhere, but this specific event wasn't going to be one where we could take them. So number two, there was that. Um, also, you know, we had another trip for our family coming up real soon after that, which were, where we needed to make sure we had finances for that, which were in place. And so we're going to pull away from that. So all of this just to please somebody else, which not alone is, I felt like a bad thing that my heart wanted to encourage them. Not a bad thing, but I think what I could have done to save all the heartache, because I, what I had to do is go back and tell this, these people, look, we, we really can't come. I'm embarrassed. I feel sad. I wanted to be there. Uh, but if I would have just paused for a minute and said, thank you for inviting me. Can I get back with you or whatever so that I can look in what's going on with myself? I could have been, could have saved a lot of heartache. I could have been emotionally honest. Look, you know, I'm really grateful that you guys invited us. Um, I really want to be there to encourage you. I'm so happy for you unfortunately 
you know, this is not the best time for us. You know, I, I, I'm sad about that. And genuinely feeling sad that, that all this stuff came up when after I said yes, which even made it worse. So I guess the point I'm trying to make in the, what I'm getting at here as far as self-awareness is absolutely, you know, people pleaser. And, and that's not always good when it comes to looking out for yourself, looking out for, you know, your higher power, your creator. Um, and others, we're, there's a hierarchy that Rochelle and I come across. She's better at explaining it, but I'm just relating this specific event, how that comes into play with that. Also, I look at a time uh, many years ago where there was another event that we had been invited to, good friends, and I'm from, a long time. From, from quite a few years ago when my son was real small. And um, we had been in also something that was on the calendar, which I was really looking forward to for bonding with my son. It was a father-son camp trip. And so um, my son brought this up, I don't know how many times, so many years after, like, hey, that father-son cantrip, we never got to go to that one because we were able to go to others after this one, you know, and he just had such a great time. And this is like the sacred day where I guess all these dads, you know, there's 50 dads and their boys go, and I got to finally be a part of it. So I realized what a special sacred day this is that these guys say, no matter what, I got work trips, I cancel them. My boss understands. They know that this day does come, comes first. This is for me. This is for my son. That's kind of a package deal. And so me not realizing how important that it was for self, for, for me to bond with my son in these precious years, you know, he's 14, he's going to be out of the house before I know it. Um, to think about this window of special time, what I'm getting at, that, that was something I really wanted to go to. And I, and I been, I, Bended or whatever you want to uh, compromise and said, you know, well, there's next year, son. We'll go to a we'll go to another one. And if I could go back in time, you know, I feel like that's something I would have really considered. Like, am I looking out for what's most important? You know, my little inner circle of people here that are intimately connected to me is part of myself. And so, you know, when I ask you guys a question, can anybody relate to having this situation similar to? This where you're always putting others first. You're seeking people, of, uh, you're seeking approval um, for your own happiness, but, the, but yet, you know, you're still empty. And finding out how important that is, you know, coming across this awareness, and it is a new awareness, you know, that I've heard about about myself before and I didn't really truly believe it. I'm looking in the mirror going, ah, oh, <laughs> I see it now. Here's an example. Oh, why is this? Yes, why why is it so hard other than just, you know, a tourist, tourist the bull, stubborn, you know, bang my head against the wall. Why is it so difficult to, to, to come to realization with such simple, simple things? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand. Um, and I'm still learning every single day that why is this so hard? It's not rocket science, but we make it so hard. I make it so hard. So it seems it, it seems like we're we're not alone. So Cheryl here is saying, um, I'm dealing with that now. It's so hard. And you asked the question, she's like, Yes, exclamation point, exclamation mm. point. Um, not alone. It's, it is hard. So, which is what I'm loving about this book. So um, in my class, I'll, I'll show you the work on how to get there. I'll show you how to do it and I'll show you whatever. Um, but maybe sometimes people aren't really ready for the class, right? Or or they've been through the class, but they still feel as though they're missing something. I can't, not everybody's ready to go super crazy deep. And I feel like that's, this is where this, this mass and kit plant claim your power comes in. Um, it's either a start or an add to doesn't take away what we're going to do in my class. Um, in fact, that's why I love this is because I feel as though they really go together well, mm -hmm. but don't you think it just, it like really highlights, how to find some things in our life that we might be missing. Right. And, and so to I, connect us with our purpose, our power. It, it does. And so, you know, with Rochelle's passion and specialty that she teaches, this book parallels the grief recovery method. But to me, uh, it's a fresh perspective. I like, I always like new perspectives um, with a, of a gentleman that's my age. He's been through a lot of similar things, so I, I can very much relate to him as he as he. It's a it's a very easy read for me to grasp. And going back to the primary purpose of you know one of the things you know not to get too crazy into it because you guys aren't reading the book. However, you know some are. I know some um, are primary primary emotions where you know I look at love, huge. It's it's along the lines of what I believe. You know uh, with. And, and my creator, I call him God. That's my creator, God, Jesus. 
you know, how, how important love is, right? And so then I, I look at the other one. Let me read it one more time. The purpose of my life is to love myself, not in a conceited way, and my higher power, you know, God and feel the value that results while inspiring others to feel the same. And it's so crazy as I look back deep, 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 deep to my relationship with my parents, you know, with my father, some of the, my earthly father thinking about how I just always wanted to be loved, you know, and that's something years, years later, we, we, we came across and I was able to say, and he said to me, but I just wanted that as a kid, you know, not all the cool toys and things when, when money was good. And during the times when he was real successful, he loved in that way. I just, I just needed, a different kind of closeness, material items. And so, and, and to feel value in, like I asked for sure, like one of the things, big things with me is, you know, I feel valued by certain things, but, you know, words or, or affection and things like that. But how important it is just for each and every one of us to feel the value. And if we're not getting that, you know, um, maybe it's a, a interesting thing to look to see are you always just trying to get that from outside sources or are you really connecting with yourself yeah. you know are you taking time for yourself to be quiet to look into yourself to have time with connection with your higher power whatever that may be whether it be god or you know i don't know that's for everybody's unique relationship but i think it what it boils down to it all comes within yourself and loving yourself being happy with who you are as a person because you can't do anything unless you, you can't really get um, past that and, and have a really deep, sincere relationship with others Others, if you can't stand who you are. You know, you know? what? You're, yeah, yeah, exactly. So as you're talking, I'm thinking of um, people I think or I see. Shell said, it would be interesting and helpful for me if I could get someone to commit to the book with me. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm just ahead of you, Cheryl, so you can always say your thoughts. But again, this is for you. It's for you. It's to connect you back to you um, because we get, we've been disconnected in our life and, and he really is good about illustrating how it happens. But um, I was thinking how so many times loving themselves, if they feel like they look okay, or if they feel like they've been eating healthy, or if they've, you know, exercised enough times a week, or if they've, so, so still that's still being, look at okay. Look okay. Oh my word. Um, so still that's being focused on external things. That's still not finding your power from within. Finding your power from within is powerful no matter what weight you're at, what your skin looks like, what your hair looks like, what your, yeah, thanks Cheryl. Um, finding your power is finding your power. And then that's what's going to drive you to eat healthy. That's what's going to drive you to, to hit the gym if that's what you do. That's what's going to drive you to study a certain thing. That's what's going to drive you to all these different areas. Uh -huh. But that your power comes from the inside of you. So if you're looking to if I feel or if they do, that's still looking outside of the power. So um, what he's really, what Master Kip highlights so clearly is, finding your power is the need to go back and heal old emotional wounds, right. which is what my work does. That's what grief recovery method does. Is I will walk you through to heal all these old wounds because it's avoiding them. Hey, my Nelly, it's, it's avoiding all the, um, all the painful experiences of your past. I'm good. Now I'm above that. Now that doesn't really bother me now, but it did then. Mm -hmm. So we have to go back and heal that stuff. Because there's no possible way for your extension cord to connect to the extension cord of the greater power, whatever you believe. It, it could be it could be God, sure, but it could be Buddha. It could be just the energy of the earth. It doesn't matter. Whatever you believe your greater power is, it doesn't matter. It's still valuable to go back and heal all the wounds. And by the way, guys, the emotional wounds caused absolutely don't expire. They're, they're leaking poison into your life and creating filters. Filters are what we use to censor the world. Um, they're what we use to, to uh, um, choosing what's going to be good and safe. But most often, your power is hiding in the pain, which is not good and safe, right? So it's kind of counterintuitive to what we've always been taught and what we naturally do. We have to be willing to go into the pain. And that's what the grief recovery method is going to do. It's going to teach you to go out, how to go into the pain um, and find that. And then Mastin is just really great at connecting your pain source to your purpose. 
huge, huge. I've just, I've been loving it. Yeah. And your examples of what, how you woke up to this whole approval addiction thing inside of you. We all have it, by the way. I will show you yours if you want. Um, we could talk about it and I'll help you find it. But that seems like that's exactly what you've done. You found yourself. Yeah, I did. And, and I, what was hindering you from connecting to life. Yeah, and I what I what I look at is I think the, the distinction is that there's nothing wrong with encur wanting to encourage people. No. There's nothing wrong with, um, hey, you know what, let's do something for this person. That's not what I'm trying to get at. But if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you know, you're looking for your own fulfillment because you're pleasing somebody else. That that's where for me I found like oh I'm I'm kind of doing it for the wrong reasons here so um, I'm gonna be if I'm okay with myself I'm okay to say no it's so hard to say that's no huge. sometimes so if I'm okay with myself and my own heart and where I'm at I have no problem saying no and it's not a big deal that's where I'm getting at is and it's gonna be weird at first you know uh, kind of looking at some of discovering myself at 41 years old like what what what's going on here I'm not going through a midlife crisis. It's I'm like just, a midlife awakening. I'm just trying to grow as a person, and and you know it, it really sticks out as as I be a, as I'm a parent, and my kids come into the little the adult stage. You know, you're past little kid stage, you're going to the little adult stage, and and you really want them to have the most out of life and connection, and having connection with them. This is where this stuff's starting to hit home because when they're little kids, you know, you take them to the mall to the play place, and you you just watch them play and. You know, but now these deep questions come. Hey, Dad, what about when this happens? Or uh, I don't know. You know, and, and my son calls it when I when I can have a fast talk in response. He's like, Dad, that really didn't help. And you know, he's like his mom in that way. I appreciate the honesty. So for me to grow in this area of connection is huge. You know, I, I think it's huge for not just me, for male, for female, for anybody yeah. at any age. Yeah. You know, if you've been living myths and you're living well well this is how i was raised and that's how we're going to do it you know i know for a fact even conversations with my dad you know <laughs> he, he you know that that's not always the best plan you know maybe it's a plan that that's all you have but if you if you're able to get outside of yourself and kind of look at what do you want do you want what you're what you learned and that's this way or the highway or do you want to be a um i know what's true for you well what's the name of the, what's you're the unique and individual what's truth. what's the word for breaking the chain um when you're a, when you're when you're actually uh you're a new person I'm trying to think of the word he uses in there anyway. i don't know awakened no 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 it, apparently it's, i haven't been studying it, it's actually um if you're somebody you know you're the first person to go to college in your family you're break. You're, you're you're different. Oh, uh, um, it starts with a T. Transitional character. Yes. So I love that. Look that up on YouTube. Trans Master and Kip. Transitional, transitional character. character is huge because just because this is all you knew or you learned or whatever, um, it doesn't mean you cannot, you know, write a new book, write your right. own book. Right. Or your own. Yeah. And so you know, and your kids may take a little from you as they grow and be parents one day, and you'll watch and back and go, "Wow, if you're, I'm so fortunate to see that." Hopefully, I am, and and go, oh, "Okay, well, I love it. Look at what they're doing with how they're doing it. That's cool, you know." And there's a little bit of me that went with that. Oh, that's cool. So anyway, I don't know if I got way off topic there. No, but it was perfect. The bottom line is transitional care. You know, loving yourself, um, not a conceited way, but in a healthy way. So and but loving yourself by saying no. Like pausing. I think my favorite word in what you said is pause. That's big to me. Pause. Just like clicking the Adam Sandler pause like, button, right? Pause while the yes is coming out of my mouth. Pause and go reflect. Go take it in. What does this mean for me? What does that look like? Is it realistic? Is it real? Pause. I thought that was really powerful. Over here on Instagram, it said, um, that, that's a really great saying, can you repeat it? Are you talking about instead of midlife crisis, but midlife awakening? Is that what you're talking about over here? And then um, also, uh, Bolte, Michael Bolton is saying, great to see you doing life together. So up, thank, thank you, brother. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I like that. So pause. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to yourself and your needs first before you're just so eager to go meet someone else and drain yourself and go into debt. and you know, have resentment and bitterness. What's that say? Yeah, it says, I was just talking about being a transitional character just the other day. Oh. It's great to break the common. Yes. It's scary to, too, it's but it's also, pretty cool. It's it's like uh, liberating, you know, and yeah. the effect that it has on 
I mean, just your relationships is, I mean, we can, we can go there if you want, but it's great. It's There's all kinds of benefits to being um, connected to yourself and, and that reflects in, in those deep relationships you have with others as well. So write our own books. It's boring if we don't, right? I mean, I don't know. The one where you said, oh, I like that one. Somebody help me. What did I say? Transitional character. You like, Trans oh, I like oh, that one. Oh, oh transitional no. character. Yeah, uh, um, uh, Mastin Kip. So if you go to YouTube, type in Mastin Kip, K-I-P-P, -P, um, transitional character. And so I think the YouTube one is like the full, maybe it might be a TED Talk or something. Because he has podcasts, he has all these different things. So transitional character. If you're on my personal Facebook page, I it's on my wall somewhere, not too far back. Um, transitional character. That one's so good. I listen to the whole thing on YouTube. I actually listen as a podcast when I'm driving around and doing whatever, and I just I'm not watching it, but I'm listening. Mm -hmm. I love that one. It's, it's just there's a lot of good nuggets in there. Is that what you're talking about over here? Is that transitional character thing? Um, but anyway. So I think, does it, who has questions, feedback, maybe a story you want to share, an idea? That's the one. Okay. Um, anything awesome, I'd love to hear from you. You can put your comments in here. We have another minute or so. But, yeah, any final thoughts? Um, you know what? No, just, just take a minute to listen to your own heart. Um, take, a, take a minute to look out for you, you know? At the end of the day, you know, people love us and, you know, we, we can we can be close to those other human beings we really care about. But if we're not we're not connected to our own heart and, and loving ourselves and being OK with who we are, you know, we don't know if those that are closest to us are going to be around tomorrow. Maybe some of you are experiencing that and you can relate to that. I, you know, I've had many people in my life that have that have um, that have died and, and things, but I'm. I'm very fortunate in my little circle. I still have everybody here in my home, but that's not always guaranteed. And if I'm, if I'm not okay with myself and, and loving who I am to be able to stay connected in life through that, then you know, that's even a scary thought. What's going to happen then? So not to say to worry about that stuff, but, but just to reflect on how important it is to be okay with who you are and that where you are in this moment, Yeah, who yeah. you are, where you are, and that you're going to be okay. And not just okay. tell yourself that you're okay. Go do some quality assurance. Take a class just to be sure. Nothing will show up if, it, if there's nothing there. The class is really magical. It'll, your stuff will show up if it's there and it's in your way and blocking you from your power, your purpose, your, your life, actually living it from the inside. Not on the outside, going through all the motions, but living it from the inside. Completely different game changer, guys. Yeah. Are you, um, you're, you're not going to be live next Friday, right? Oh, good call. Right. Thanks. Nice. You're going to be out of range. Yep. So uh, we are going to be out of range, like Wes just said. Completely uh, no Wi-Fi, no cellular service, nothing. So next Friday is, I don't know, whatever comes after July 26th, August 2nd. So August 2nd, uh, I won't have a luncheon live. I'll miss you guys. I did set up all my posts, so they'll be out there to maybe – uh, drop a new seed or, or an encouragement, but always still send your emails, your texts, your comments, and whatever, because when I get back, I'll be ready to work and, um, and answer your questions or, you know, just connect. Uh, I do have um, those two-day classes posted, um, uh, let's see, on my website, you can register, or um, uh, my link on Instagram, my profile link on Instagram. Uh, you could click that and register if you want. There's a September class, one October class, one November class. If I find that they are really popular, I'll add more. But for now, uh, we've got one in each month. So, yeah, come visit me in person. It's a two-day class. It's powerful. It will change your life. Uh, it's uh, two days, so you could even travel in if you need to. Um, I can help you find a hotel or a place to stay. So, anyway, everybody... Thank you for your comments. Thanks for your feedback. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Wes, thanks for being here, sharing your, your heart, which I think I know I can relate to. I lived most of my life really being more concerned on what do they need, what will help, help them be happy, and then, you know, maybe they'll want to be my friend if I do, and I lived so far outside of my human ability. I didn't sleep. 
It's a grieving experience, and to say the least. And, yeah, and, and um, that's right. So, yeah, just learning to connect back to ourself. Power of no. But it, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for helping me. Thank you for helping everyone cool. here. If you find anything that's helpful, valuable to you, share this video with your friends. Um, I'll put it up on YouTube and share the link to that. Um, yeah, I hope it gets you started. I hope it encourages you to find yourself for real. And that doesn't come from consumption. And it doesn't come from what you have. Your power comes from inside of you. Yeah? You're hot. I need a big... Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank All you. Right. Bye, guys. All right. Okay, everybody. I love you. Thanks for joining. What does it say? It's a whole new world working on yourself. Very uncomfortable for sure. Girl, you nailed that until you hit the spot where you're like, yes, and then you're just driving toward it unabashedly, you know, unapologetically, just going for it. But it's scary up until you hit that point. Okay, emotional, totally. climax, emotional climax. I finally learned that when it's scary, or hard or painful, that's actually the flag calling me in that direction. And it actually took a lot of fear out. Mm. So uh, that's been huge. I don't know what to do. <sighs> oh, that's the scary one? Oh, that's where I need to go. But it takes work to get there, so I'm willing to help you. All right, love you guys. Have a great week. Again, I'll miss you next week, and I uh, will see you. Will you push in when we're done? Where's the end button? Right at the top right. Okay. No, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay, love you all. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye. Pause. And, and now um, share. Share.